Hello once again, chess enthusiasts. We have in front of us a position which is a, a checkmate by white in three moves. The first thing to note is that should white take this bishop, it is stalemate. So we don't want to do that. Equally, we don't want to take this pawn. Although it is in keeping with what we really want to do, in other words, we want to clear the fourth rank and inflict bishop g4 checkmate. The problem with taking the pawn here is that it allows black to interpose and then there is no checkmate within three moves. It can't be done. So having established that we don't want to end up in stalemate and we don't want to lose the opportunity of checkmating in three moves, how do we clear this fourth rank? This is the, the, the issue here. We want eventually to be able to, with this Bishop was pinning the knight to inflict checkmate there, with the rook supporting it. So how do, how do we achieve that? Well, of all the possible moves here, believe it or not, we don't clear the fourth rank. This is the paradoxical key move. In other words, it's a contradiction in terms. And the key move, can you see it? Well, it's d4. That's right we are blocking the fourth rank. So how can we possibly checkmate him on the fourth? Well, there are half a dozen variations here. Let's look at the captures first. Black has more moves now than he previously had because, of course, he can take with this pawn. So let's start off with this capture. What do we do here? Well, what we do in reply to that is we, we do take the bishop. And you notice... If this pawn marches on or takes here, the rook is attacking the knight, and then it is bishop g4 mate. So the pawn capture is no good. How about having just played d4? That doesn't work. What about this capture here? Well, many of you might think, well, it's bound to be the reverse of the other one. Well, it is, yes. We take the bishop this time this way. And whether he marches on or captures again, it frees the fourth rank so that we can play bishop g4 mate. Pretty incredible, isn't it? So those are the two pawn captures out the way. We'll have a look at the bishop captures now. So that's the, the starting lineup. And we've decided that d4 is the key move. So what happens if black takes like this? What do we do then? Well, this is sort of the reverse of the first two variations, but this time we're capturing the pawn rather than capturing the bishop. We're going in for this. And what we're doing here is we're saying to Black, you have this bishop and only that bishop that can be legally moved. Whether you move it down this diagonal or you take the pawn, you're going to free up this fourth rank and it's going to be bishop g4, mate. So that doesn't work. How about capturing the other way? And many of you might be saying, well, I can get a feel for what's happening here. Now, it's not going to make any difference. It's simply going to be the reverse of the other, is it? Well, no it isn't. Not quite. If he captures there, what is the problem with taking this pawn and freeing up that rank so that he has then to move his bishop and your mate? Well, the problem is if you take this pawn, you're giving him an opportunity of playing b takes c6, sorry, c5, and there's no mate in three. So what you have to do, you don't take the pawn this time, you march on with d5. So it's similar, but it's different. And these little nuances are most important, so watch out for them. And then no matter where he moves, if it's down this diagonal or taking, you've achieved your objective. You've cleared the fourth and bishop g4 mate. So that's the two pawn captures and the two bishop captures out the way. Okay, the starting lineup again, and we played d4. So what's left? 
while the bishop moves without capturing anywhere down here at all. Just let's say he moves here. What do we do in this situation? How can we possibly checkmate on the fourth rank? Well, we can't. And this is why d4 is so good, because on the one hand, with all the capture moves, we do manage to mate through the use of the fourth rank and the pin. But when he just moves the bishop this way, we play here. It's as simple as that. Looks a bit odd, doesn't it? So what are we threatening here? Well, well done to those that have seen it. We're threatening e4 checkmate on the third. So what does the player of the black pieces do here? Well, if he takes here, you take back, checkmate. If he takes here, you take here, checkmate. Pretty good. So, clearly, bishop down this a1 to h8 diagonal doesn't work. What about this way? Let's say you go here. What, what do you do then? Do you do the same? Well, yes you do. You play rook c3 again. You're concentrating on the third rank. Now, if he takes this pawn as one of his legal moves, you take bang and it's checkmate. And of course, if he takes with this pawn, you take bang. Checkmate. If he takes it with the bishop, he has no opportunity of interposing because all that you do is you take it back and that is checkmate. And this goes from a problem when you initially look at it thinking there's something wrong here. I often think that. I think that there's a mistake in the way that the position's laid out or it's a mate in four, not a mate in three. But uh, these problems are very carefully checked and, and no mistakes are made. So you can be pretty sure that when they're presented that they are solvable in the number of moves prescribed. And again, you see, he's powerless to do anything with this knight because it's been pinned all along and the knights cover all the dark squares superbly. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's, it's pretty good, isn't it? And uh, well done to those if you saw the moves as you're going along. And goodbye for now.